Here on Debaku University, I'm going to cover a controller that has fuzzy logic and some things you should know about it and how you should best utilize it in your growing space. All right, let's get into carbon dioxide controller with fuzzy logic for cannabis production. So first off, probably important to know is just simply what is fuzzy logic and kind of we use this term. Well, what does it actually mean? Well, this fuzzy logic is an internal program that utilizes dosing duration and changes in carbon dioxide levels to calculate how to most efficiently maintain the preset target level of carbon dioxide. The goal is for the controller to not largely over or under dose from the target present preset level. Here's, the, here's kind of a graphical analysis of what this looks like. Well, initially, we may have some dosing that occurs and it overshoots and it goes below and overshoots and kind of goes through this. However, when we implement fuzzy logic, we can see that the swings in the total um, duration that spends over or below the set point start to get reduced over time. This is the controller learning the conditions, learning the growing area, learning the rate of dosing, and getting more dialed in. You also notice that the frequency uh, tends to increase. So little short durations, little pulses, can be a great way for that to a controller to learn your growth space into efficiently a uh, dose with carbon dioxide. So what are the limitations of this fuzzy logic? These gradual adjustments that you see are specific to the growth space and make these controllers very efficient at delivering carbon dioxide. And this is why you typically pay a little bit more for these. This can reduce the, the potential for wasting carbon dioxide and limit the number of bottle changes that needs to be made while still maintaining near target levels of carbon dioxide enrichment. So not only are you extending the life of your bottle, you're also maintaining the conditions closer to that preset target that you've set. However, this cannot be used with carbon dioxide generators. It only works with bottle or liquid fed systems. Generators are only on and off, and unlike the pulse dosing that can occur with the compressed tank of carbon dioxide. And we can see example of that here, the pulse dosing. Some are longer, some are shorter, and it's basically the controller dialing in and making sure it's staying within that target range, ideally staying within the dead band that you've set, which is the amount of tolerance you have to be above or below your actual set point. So how do we set that dead band? Uh, how do we set that kind of target level above or below? This setting decides how tight you want the controller to keep carbon dioxide levels to the target set point. Essentially, how far the controller will allow the carbon dioxide levels to deviate from the chosen setting before triggering carbon dioxide's um, source to switch on or off. The default for most systems is around 50 parts per million for most controllers, and this is a good general setting for bottle-based systems. Selecting 50 parts per million as your dead band setting will allow your growth space levels to be over or below by 50 parts per million before the controller will turn on or off the dosing. Other growers want something a little bit tighter. We can see this one set here to be 25 parts per million. You don't want to set it too tight because otherwise the controller will struggle to kind of keep it within that range. You don't want it too large because then you have large swings. So 50 is usually the starting point. If everything's going good, you can adjust it from there. Make sure your sensor for whatever system you're using has the presence of a photo cell. Why do you want a photo cell? Well, this will help ensure that the carbon dioxide is only added during the light period, which is only when the plants can actually utilize it. A time uh, could be used if you have a regiment light schedule, but photo cell is generally a fail-safe option to ensure carbon dioxide is only added when plants uh, can use it. Some of these symptoms have like an on-off time that you could set, but really most manufacturers now are going over to photo cells, so you adjust the, the light duration if you're in indoor growing, the carbon dioxide system will automatically adjust to that. Also, if you're growing in an outdoor location or a cold frame, the photocell can adjust to the either lengthening or decreasing duration of sunlight that you might be getting based on seasonal changes. Lastly, what can this system do? Well, it can maximize the yield of cannabis. Over the course of a growing cycle, cannabis plants will become many times larger. And as a result, ha having a controller that will adjust to these conditions will automatically ensure efficiency. As those plants get larger, carbon dioxide consumption could increase. And having this fuzzy logic can help, again, maintain those levels despite these changes that might be occurring to ensure you have a very efficient grow op operation.